afternoon all. This morning on the my tour of the Great Hall, for those who went, that it was uh, interesting, illuminating, probably, uh, uh, I suspect, mi mixed emotions, seeing the sight of the hostels uh, being, or having been demolished in, in the hall itself, but um, we're in uh, clearly a, a, a period of transition. And um, so I was wanted to talk to you about is our program today, our, our ethos, uh, and a little bit of uh, detail about what, what the plans are. Um, my name is Mark Finch, I'm the director at Rush Fund, um, the uh, investor who uh, is dealing with this project, and our guys of our subsidiary company, Brecken Investment Partnership. Um, we've been working on this project for a wee while. Uh, it's not the most important <coughs> for projects. It has uh, a huge uh, list, I suppose, of constraints and challenges and issues. Um, but likewise, it's, uh, it's full of uh, significant opportunity. And um, I wouldn't say it's a labour of love because <coughs> Uh, in some respects it is, but it's a commercial project and our vision is to create a sustainable um, long-term um, project around the Breton Hall Estate which uh, meets a number of objectives. I, I thought I would just outline, just quickly talk for five minutes about the ethos of the project and a little bit about the programme and then a little bit about the master plan and what happens next and what's happening later on, on in, in the year. Um, the hotel market, the hotels are quite, <coughs> I mean, we kind of all know what, what a hotel is, we all have a view, but we, we, it's, it's an interest from a real estate developer, a simple real estate person like myself, it's, 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 a, it, it's a very interesting sector. And in the traditional way, uh, as, a, as people are dealing with property, you have a landlord and you have a tenant, and the tenant pays the rent, and the landlord picks up the rent check, and, and it doesn't really work that way in hotel sense. Most of the big names that we're all familiar with in the hotel world uh, own very, very little real estate. Um, they have what they call franchise agreements, and they uh, put their name or their brand or their flag associated with a with hotel, and a manager comes in and operates uh, that for a sometimes remote investors. So there's kind of three tiers to a traditional hotel development. Uh, <coughs> the investor, the money, uh, the manager, the people that pays the wages, keeps the, keeps the operation going, and, and the brand. Um, and in many respects, the brands often dictate how <coughs> the project is evolved. So you, know, if you stay at a, 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 a Crown Plaza, you stay in Leeds or Nottingham or Bristol or like London, you get, you get a sense of what it is. It's consistent, it's the continuity of, across their brand. Uh, the Americans love the brands and they love their consistency. Um, hotels in Europe perhaps a little bit different, but um, they all have their place. Now, and then in respects, brands are interested in how the locations that could meet the commercial requirements allied to that and then find a location to see. Um, in many respects, we're the other way around. Uh, we, we have a location and we have a spirit of a place. We have a, um, a, a deep history, heritage, where we would call it, that actually dictates, or should dictate, what we think is the, is the proposition. And we've done a lot of work, work and research over the last couple of years about what actually is a hotel. Um, we struggled even with the name. You know, is it is a hotel the right name, or is it just a place? Is, is it a place you stay with rooms? Is it a gallery with rooms? Is it a, um, a library with rooms? Different kind of things. We all come back to hotel to kind of know what that is. But uh, we've done a lot of research about what the type of um, uh, what this kind of, kind of this proposition could offer, and how that would fit into a marketplace. And I think one of the things that's very common and consistent and that we're finding, or we have found through our research, is that people now, they, they go and they collect, they, we all travel a lot, and they have their budget travel, we go all over the world and we see places. 
and we experience places, and we think about where we would like to experience, what we'd like to experience, what the areas we'd like to stay in, and we look about, we look for a hotel that's, that sucks, so whether we want to go in the Ferry and Lakes, or in the Fjords, or in Tustin Hills, we look at the experience that can give, and we find a hotel that matches that. And whether it's um, the experience that we get from a place in our trip, we, 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 come, a, we come away, uh, I think, I often go away from a trip feeling um, enlightened or knowledgeable or with, with experience things. And I think a key word that, that I come back to on that then is, um, is education. We, we go and experience a place and we come away learning something. And whether that's uh, of explicit, you know, we've got on a course, or we've gone on a study trip, or whether it's actually subliminal, and we've actually felt something about place, we've got away and think, actually, I, I know a bit more, I know a bit more about geography, I know a bit more about heritage, I know a bit more about nature, about art, about sculpture, um, a whole series of things. And, and with, we think that ethos is, is very, very important. Um, and it translates to, uh, if you've got that, that vision, an idea, how, do you actually, how does it manifest itself? How does it translate into a series of things? And one of them includes a, a physical plan, a master plan of how we see the site developing. Um, Secondly is the interior, about the look and the feel of a hotel and the type of space that we, that we, we, we feel enriched or that we enjoy. Um, thirdly about, is about the brand and how we portray that in the marketing material. So we're on TripAdvisor or we're looking at a, a Condé Nast Traveller and we, we learn about this place. Um, challenging one, because in, in many respects what we're talking about here is, is actually slightly anti-brand. You know, there, there's no brand, the, you know, the brand is the place in a way, but you know, we do need marketing material, we do need to showcase what, what we've got and what we can offer. Um, and fourthly, it's about operation, actually how it is managed and the experience we get um, with the mansion. And, and one of the one person, I can't remember who said it to me, so he, we want to come in through the door of Bretton Hall feeling as though we're, we're stopping at our friend's country house. You know, we're not we're not, we don't feel as though we have to clean our shoes down and there's a butler or some old guy waiting for us and we can't go here, we can't go there. We feel, although it's a very historic and very um, um, formal place in places, we actually feel at home. And how we actually dress and use the interior so people can feel comfortable. So whether you're out hiking, or whether you're on a course, or you're a dog or whatever, or it, 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 it's that. And that, and that and manifest itself in the plan. So we've got, um, I hope you can see this, this big plan. I have a series of images, you saw the plans here, but the, <coughs> there's a lot of technical detail. But for those of you who are on the trip this morning, um, are we familiar, we, we, we walk down from Beaumont Drive, and we see all the hostels which are either side of the drive are now cleared, and we sweep right through, to where what looks like a pile of rubble, well, it is a pile of rubble, um, <laughs> at the moment, maybe here, will form the core of the formal landscape that brings back into uh, the hall. And, and Richard's fabulous image about how it was in the, um, how it dated, was it dated from the 30s, that image, or was it later? Late 30s. Late 30s. About an aspect of opening it up. There's one hostel left to demolish. You can't demolish it because he's got pumping. Here to the utilities, that's, that's in here, it's the Grasshopper Hostel. So those are clear to provide the setting for the mansion. The mansion is mansions, so the mansion is a great two sided to asset, together with the other buildings which are part of the retained scheme. We have the sales block, and we have the coach house, we have the later theatre, Foreman Arts Theatre, and we have the claim in the library space, which I'll come on to you in a second about. Um, the archive, I don't think it's still the archive around, we can go down and see the exhibition later. Um, some outbuildings which uh, hide our gubbings for a hotel, lots of storage space, lots of things um, out of the way. So you've got the benefit of existing buildings. A chameleon house, which is what it says on the tin, a house with camellias, and uh, the gym building. 
Later on into the site of the, uh, the bank is the Victor Passmore studio. Um, and the essence of what we have been working on in terms of the master plan around these kind of uses is going back to the ethos about what can we offer as an opportunity, where are the commercial markets and the drivers to do that work, and how does that fit with, with the plan. Commercially, um, we, you know, we have bills to pay and we're going to have to collect some bedroom revenue and people are going to eat here and we've got, we'll hopefully create something that will generate commercial uh, venture. So we've done a hell of a lot of research about where those markets can be. Um, we would hope that people here will stay for a night or two, perhaps uh, every year or maybe a week or wherever, but there is a series of different markets. Um, we are in, in, in the centre of the Yorkshire Sculpture Park, which gets about 600,000 visitors a year. Um, we're in the centre of the Yorkshire Sculpture Triangle. Uh, we're at the centre of Yorkshire, which as a brand is, is right at the top at the moment in terms of cycling and sculpture and art and, and you know, certainly from the Welcome to Yorkshire um, promotion. You know, we, we're up there as a key destination. The figures are great on visitor numbers into the county. We're also from a business point of view, um, equidistant from Leeds and Sheffield. We're in Wakefield, it's growth, it's going there, it's a city. Um, just off the M1, just off the M62. So, although um, you can, uh, I'm not degrading other hotels and other kind of budget facilities, but you know, why not stop here if you're on business? You know, you know, if I was to come back to where you see on price, which I'll come to in a second, but you can stop in Breton or you can stop just off the motorway in a, in a, in a budget accommodation, you know, offering that choice. There's a market there. And there are other markets, such as weddings. Um, we don't. Not this just to be a wedding venue, but people want to get married here uh, and we want to offer that opportunity and conferences and space uh, on, a, on, a, on a big scale. And I think with the past more and the theatre and space, we can get a couple of thousand um, people to an event, uh, no, no problem. One of, the, um, one of the pieces of work that we've done and the other market I've, I've, I forgot to mention, which is a key market as well, is postdocs <coughs> and students um, and courses and opportunities and certainly interests that we've picked up from other um, places. You, pick, you can stay uh, in some fantastic locations around the country. You can stay in obviously Oxford Colleges during the summer and you can go and, you and learn. But there is demand for people wanting to, to stay or do their PhD for a couple of weeks or whatever. So we've got these different markets, but they can't all necessarily pay the um, same price or they've got the same budgets from business to students up to, to grand space. So we've been working on our um, master plan, which is about uh, creating an inclusive hotel venue that offers a range of bedrooms and spaces throughout what we kind of, on one end, could call a two to four star. Uh, offer. Uh, probably one of the closest examples we've seen is a, a cultural embassy in Amsterdam called the Lloyds, which is a one to five star facility in the same hotel. Um, a two to five star or a grand room to a hostel type room, however we want to brand it and call it. Um, but the, thing, the, the, the key component of that is you are staying at Breton, you are staying at Breton Hall, and if you have um, a big budget, you can have a bigger room, and you have a bigger, bigger view. If you have a lower, a smaller budget, you have a smaller room, and a, and a slightly different view. But you have the same experience, and you have the same kind of, everything works the same. You know, the beds are the same, showers are hot, it, everything is consistent. And how that then translates into our plan. And very simply, you know, the mansion itself has some fantastic view rooms, and it has some um, okay rooms, and it has some rooms we've got to do some work to, <laughs> but it, it, it has a mix. Um, but the, the, the mansion itself provides the opportunity for us to have a slightly more, um, I don't like the word luxurious, because it sounds exclusive, but slightly more grander, grander space. This is the ground floor plan of the mansion. Which remembers we coming on the tour this morning. We came in through our entrance. There's also secondary entrances through, which trade us straight through to the function space. If you go into function space rather than booking your or, or going into reception, 
and there's a third um, reception area, or third entrance from <coughs> here. It's a series of, of main rooms. The bow room opened up, if you took a look at that this, this morning, through to the music room, the room, practice room, went through. A public space on the ground floor, quite a large amount of public space for a mansion which has 43 bedrooms. On the On the upper levels of the mansion, then to find its colour code, it's going to give us some kind of views. So they kind of our ground spaces and ground bedrooms from the front, overlooking uh, lakes to the east side, then moving back into the heart of the building, the principal rooms here, some other bedrooms as well. So you get the kind of feel is that uh, as, our, as you go to market with this proposition, that these rooms are slightly more expensive than these rooms. Um, but it's the same experience. And that goes to the second floor and there's a mezzanine floor to, to the mansion itself. Um, one of the areas that we've been looking at and working on is what do we do with the rest of the estate and what opportunities does that provide? And how we can reuse buildings in a sustainable way. If you go about the master plan, the clay and the library building, um, interesting building. The library is not, not listed, but it's part of the, the estate. And it, it, it's an interesting building. Um, the clay is as well, um, together with um, the other buildings that we're keeping. So we've got a, we've been doing some work and some, some, some drawings on how we can effectively convert the library and the clay space to provide additional bedroom accommodation. Um, ground and first floor together with uh, supporting uh, amenity space uh, as well as, as, leisure, as leisure facilities. There's 34 bedrooms in, in the annex that we've got here. So this has provided an opportunity to create um, some pretty low cost accommodation as part of that mix. So we've got that, if you call it two star offer, up to the four star offer within the main mansion. You can still experience Breton, you can still stay here. If you're working in the, um, or on business and you've got a particular limit on budget, you know, the rooms are here. These rooms ain't small, because uh, it's dealing with an existing building, it's quite a large building, so they're, they're actually quite, quite a bit bigger than a standard um, ho budget type hotel from fair. But it also gives the ability to tap into the, the, the postgrads and student markets and, and education markets. Uh, the other elements of that master plan, if you go back to um, this plan, is we've also got consent now for the conversion of the stables block in the coach house to provide um, apartment lodge type space. Um, now the way we're working on our, probably on our master plan is that 77 bedrooms is to be blunt enough at the moment. It's a new start, it's a new venture. We need to get up and up and running. But they give it, so it gives us the opportunity at some future day to look at the stables block and either provide more accommodation of a similar kind that we've got in the Clegg and the Annex, or perhaps the apartment, slight more self-catering option uh, at a later stage. So what we've done to the Sables Block is that we've, we're part way through on, on, on the programme but the building fabric has been um, put, put solid but we'll be stripping out and we'll be shelling it basically so that it gives us an opportunity for perhaps some temporary use whilst we look at a longer term um, permanent solution. Uh, that gives us back to um, probably two things. I'll, I'll, um, I'll touch on before open up for, for kind of questions is this, this program. We started work last year. Uh, it's a complicated program because we have to bring in, uh, we can't knock down buildings until we clear them of anything that's hazardous in the building. So we have to go in and take all the uh, hazardous materials away. We can only knock down buildings at certain times of the year because we have. Uh, two or three hundred bats flying around in the summer so we can't uh, impact on roosts so they go away I don't know where they go but when they come back 
they're, they're, they seem to be okay living in somewhere new, but once they're back, you can't disturb them. So they'll start to roost during the summer. And we've had a uh, uh, colony of newts, which we were to see on tour this morning. The whole site is a very small, knee-high black fence, which is to, we've, we've trapped the newts, put them near the side of the fence, and they go off to the uh, Bothy Pond, and they can't, they can't come back because they'll hit the fence. <laughs> and um, that means the site's protected from newts while we're doing the, the, the works. So we, can't, we don't, we don't uh, destroy or accidentally destroy, the contractors actually destroy um, that. So we've got uh, habitat creation as well. Ultimately, the, that, those fences will go, um, as will all the fences and security of the site, back to our no boundaries philosophy, and it's a seamless part of the estate. So that demolition has been key, is the key second stage once we deal with preparation. We're close to the last few weeks of that. Um, so the site will, will be regraded, grassed and landscaped and um, starting to uh, put the basic foundations for the next level of, of work. In parallel to that we've been doing work on the mansion and the stables block which is about new roofing, uh, stonework repair, new windows, repainting of windows, taking out the metal ones at the second floor, putting in timber uh, windows and the stable Block. If you remember if people are down there from the recent years, and the car park goes right up, the hard to lot surface, it goes right up to the building. And over the years, there's just been wash that's delaminated the stone at the lower ground, so there's been new stone indented into the stables, so that, that's solid. Some work to be done in the next stage about protection. They're protected in the mansion, and the stables are protected with the work that's been done there, stopping water coming in. So that the Lambton area, which has suffered from some water damage of ingress over the years, is, is the water stopped so that part of the next programme will be putting that right. Once the demolition guys are out of the way, um, and that's a specialist contractor job um, through Demex that have been working um, with us, is that the, there'll be two, two, stages, um, to, well, two stages to do, really. The first immediate stage is what we call our sample room package. And this is where we've got four sample rooms, um, three types of bedroom, two star, three star, four star, if you want to call it that, together public space, which will kit out um, two reasons. One, it helps us to visualise how the space is going to work and the interior look, but it also sets the quality of benchmarking for the contractor, say that's what we want and just go away and do the rest of the 77 um, to those standards. So those work should take place. Uh, in the early summer, and then it's into the main works contract, which is the uh, fit out of bedrooms and dealing with uh, power and the completion of the access road, which is part way in, which will take us from the visitor centre to the kennel block and the related car parking and infrastructure improvements. This landscape, this is this plan is hot for press, it only came in yesterday, it's part of our tender package of drawings. Um, for the landscape um, programme, we work through the landscape agency, have been involved in this site for many, many years, um, and underlying this, this plan is a series of technical drawings, and uh, every tree's mapped, and every shrub's mapped, etc. so that there's a, a composite, so that we, we have that detailed package for the contractor. Uh, in terms then of uh, programme, um, we I suppose our, our, our work and our research and our information has been to inform what is a physical plan. Um, we're developers and we get involved in doing buildings and that's what we, we, we know and that's what we do. Um, so our work is very much focused upon the building but making sure that we've, we're, we're, we're storing a set of buildings that fits our business plan and vision. The second, or the later stages of work is we start to get um, more geared up or in terms of the marketing and the promotion and the operation. We have identified a hotel management partners to work with that will work with us on that vision and that ethos rather than the other way around and telling us how they do things in other locations and this is what they should do here. So we've informed that with a business plan that ensures that this has as good a chance as it has of being a sustainable long term um, uh, value 
but also then as we go into the operation of, of, of it and, and detail that up and start to recruit, starting to think about um, some of the areas of, of, of opportunity of how um, the space can really get alive and some of that is be about programming and events and activities and courses, um, whether it be art or sculpture or nature or heritage or even music again. Um, well, but, so there's lots of conversations there and also about branding. I think one time I presented here and I talked about the, the Breton as a, as a hotel and I think I was told them to come back again or something. <laughs> um, so I, I, we changed our mind, we, we changed our mind at the end of the day it's Breton Hall isn't it? I mean, it's Breton Hall within Breton. And, and, and it's wider than that but we, we there's some, it, it, it's, it's kind of a I suppose, seedbed of, of creativity. And there's some creative minds and some creative people out here, and people already offered to help in, in different things. And um, so I, I, I'd like to, at some stage later in the year, kind of share some of that, share some about how we can start to layer on. You know, so we've got, we've got the buildings and we've got the interiors. I've not spoken much about the interiors, but there is a program. Uh, it's a Dutch uh, interior designer that we're working alongside with to develop um, about how that fits um, and the ethos of that, but it, it, it's not there yet really to share, but I'm quite happy to share it as and where. And then branding and, and sharing about how, how we want to show, showcase this to, to the world um, about what, what the, the venture off, has to hop, uh, offer. So there may be one or two of you, there might be a group you might want to get involved in, in, in that. Um, it is. As I say, it's, it's, it's very, it's a country home, it's a country house, it's a very formal house, it's a mansion. How we actually create that an inclusive rather than exclusive um, venue and opportunity here is, is, is really quite important to us. How we actually, uh, going back to county kind of interiors, you see that this morning we've got lots of public rooms, and lots of public spaces. You know, they're not all going to be full all the time of, of events or activities, how we can actually curate that space. So maybe you know, some of that space can be used for a talk or it could be used to work or, or used to actually study or do a course or something. And the, some of the work the interiors are doing on it is, what they like to think of is the different paces of spaces within the buildings. Some very active, you know, quite, quite um, busy spaces and then some kind of slightly quieter. Uh, spaces that, that, that we've got, we've got a lot, lot to do. So it, it's, it's, a, um, it's a big project, but well, I think it's a very exciting project. Um, we're, I suppose, are we halfway through? We're looking to open at the end of next year, so it'll, we probably are about halfway through. Um, and we've done a lot, and we've invested a lot, and we've got more to invest. Um, but we have belief that this will be um, somewhat, somewhat u unique, uh, and um, I was tempted to put, and I've got, we've got lots from our research, lots of slides of things that we've got in our research, and you start to pull them together. In many respects, it's kind of misleading. You can't find anything like this. You, know, you can find little bits of things. You can say, well, I've been to Amsterdam, still that hotel, I did that. But there are actually some things at that hotel you wouldn't do here. And, and there are probably bits in England that you might, you might look at, and you might see, and you know about, about but there isn't really anything that you could say, go and have a look at that, that's how it's going to be. So pictures from other places are, are interesting, but they don't really tell um, the story of what we're trying to create here. So uh, half an hour, so I've got some time to questions and possible answers. If, uh, am, I, am I picking and sharing, or are you doing Alan, or whatever, but I'm happy to have a go if people have got... Uh, Anything they want to ask? I'll just grab some water. <laughs> it's a very exciting project. I was wondering, from its inception to when the hotel's up and running, how many new jobs will it have created? Um, we're, creating, well, we're creating quite jobs at the moment, although they're different contractors that come in and go. So. We don't create because they go. I mean, we'll have about 80, 90 people on, on site when the hotel's up and running. So, so that really, um, we want to connect in one of our core 
activities, and you tend to do this about nine months before you open, is to appoint a general manager. Mm -hmm. General manager will want to learn staff, mm -hmm. a key, key kind of staff, but then there'll be a wider base, and we, we like to tap in, and we start tapping to wait for the college and the things about hospitality. Because there are, there's a bit of a centre excellence for that. So, about eight to nine to, but look, there's been jobs in the meantime. Lots of big, heavy demolition guys, and well, not many girls actually, but perhaps it should be. Probably a few. Sorry. Yeah, I'd like to know about um, when you take the barriers away, have you opened a place up um, and can I just say that I'm so glad that you said about inclusion, it's an exclusion. Because, I mean, bread and gold does mean a lot to us, and I was wondering how expensive it was going to be. But that's not my question. <coughs> my question is, what do you, how are you going to manage the bats and the newts? Bats and the newts? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the newts, once the, uh, once the heavy work's done, then the barriers can, new barriers can effectively come down and newts can can colonise the site. They come, they come down this part of the site to the then hibernate. Mm. So you, the, 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 that's when then they go up to breed at the Bothby Pond. So it goes down. Then what, then what happens if you want to do development around a certain bit? For instance, if you wanted to extend this building, you know, all we have to do is do a new fence around that bit. Right. So uh, most of that work's done, as well as creating ha new habitat, which is, um, well, I'm not an ecologist, but there's lots of big piles of rubble, really, yeah. where newts can live in. Place, sorry, you can leave them in place so you can advise you about how to manage the, so that those colonies can still exist alongside the yes. people that are going to come and work. And yeah, yeah. The, 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 the main risk on newts is heavy vehicles, lorries, and, and things. So we have a peak ecology that does on that. On bats, it's a question of providing new roosts and facilities so there are some that's in trees already and there'll be some that's in buildings. Um, it was a little bit like uh, y you plug the gaps and they find another gap. So they have, there was a roost over here, so we provided that and then we found that they'd moved here. I can't say it's the same bats, but then, <laughs> and then they were moving again. So effectively working again at the Brooks Ecology that does with our bats, we've got a strategy for dealing with that. So it's, it's important because it's a big asset. Um, Um, yeah, in, 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 in principle, I mean, the, uh, it, it is a live, has been a live construction site, it is, but the, you know, the risks get narrower down, and then there'll be the sample rooms to kind of look at, and um, there may be a particular point, I mean, we're only, what are we, May, I don't know, maybe this year, or whether there's an intervening visit, because there's a possibility, but um, in principle, in principle, yes, I think... Uh, end of well, our, our target is end of next year. So there'll um, be another reunion between now. So there'll be another reunion between now and there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, there'll be a bit more to see. Um, we have we one of the things. So I got a question in a second, but it's just about the timing of it. We're, we're dealing with a list of building, and, and you don't actually know exactly what you've got until you start doing it. So. It's very tempting because we get lots of quests to actually start to take bookings. People want weddings and they say, well, well, we'll book you in. But we don't want to disappoint and we want to get it right. So um, yeah, I'm not saying we've got all the time in the world, but it, it, that's why we're not spe set a specific day. But towards the end of next year is where we see, we see a kind of grand opening or soft opening. Yeah. I'll, I'll just add on to that. Um, we have this uh, very grand garden exactly 10 years ago when the college closed and we had a celebration of all the Bretton Woods. It was a wonderful weekend long event for alumni and for the staff. I just wondered when the hotel opens whether there could be some sort of commitment to have a, a similar event for 
former alumni and staff um, mm. to, to come back into the hotel and, and have some sort of event and, and launch um, in that respect. We, if we could have some sort of commitment to that. Well, that, that's why I'm not quoting rates today. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great idea, and it, and it is, and whether it's an you know, annual event, and it's wide an event, I mean, you have lots of love and depth of feeling for this, for this campus. And I think, you know, that was very evident. And it, 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 even though that was a closing event 10 years ago, in a way, it was a very joyous event and, and a weekend of celebration. It would be nice then to have the next chapter marked with a parallel celebration for the next chapter. And it brings the past and the future together and marries them in a, in a rather nice way. I think, I think yeah, I think, I, I think so. I think you come back to the point. I mean, there's points of discussions, and I don't know if it was Richard that told you, but you know, the history of the site, it goes back well, well before YSP, it goes well back before the college. You know, the, the, the roots of this site is, is to, Brecon means a lot to different, different people, and the roots is a college. And it was sad when it was closed. Um, it'd be even sad, sadder if it was just left to rot, rot and ruin and, and, and nothing happening. And, um, so this is a mark of a new chapter. But it, it's that, I, I do think, and I, I maybe, maybe we're wrong, but I do think this education, you know, kind of a learn, whether it's subliminal or whether it's, you know, you went to college here, so you learn and you did a study course, but whether you come here just to walk your dog, you actually learn something, even about yourself. So it's that, but maybe it's the start of a new chapter, so I think, I think it's a good idea. Right back. Yes? to encourage. Um, we'd, we'd like to harness that. I, I, I suppose my only caveat is, is you'll have to bear with us if, the, if we can't do everything that people ask of us. Um, and we'll try and we we'll at least explore and consider but ways in which you know, there, are, there are things that happened in the past or getting um, plays back or whatever. I, I, I don't have the expertise to, to do that. I mean we can get people to do it but you know, if there are ideas that, that others want to say, well, actually, I, I, I want to get involved, then well, we, we can do so. We just need to think about the, the forum for that and about how we, how we collate and, and, and group that together. Um, and maybe get together maybe later this year as a, as a subgroup. But the principle of it is absolutely. Yes. Well, I think to, uh, on, on those discussions, uh, I don't know what the Um, they're all they're all mapped. Um, the trees are um, they're all they're all mapped. They're all different state. There's one tree um, that's in a little bit of poor condition, so that might just need to be re-memorialised. Um, but we'll need to deal with that. Um, but the, and the benches are a location. But the benches are, uh, have been quite fluid. I think 
what historically, and we piece this together with YSP, is that obviously trees are in trees, but benches were kind of put there and, and, it, and it, it, it was kind of offered as an opportunity um, to do that. And there are quite a few in their state. There's not so much now in the wider because I think YSP have a kind of more of an adopter tree approach rather than kind of memorial. So we've got them all mapped. We and do they need stay, to. They oh, they're still where they are. Yeah, yeah they're so. They, yeah, they're, there's. Um, well, there's a collection, collection in front of the mansion, there's, there's one in front of Ezra Taylor, or the old Ezra Taylor, there was, was it, it was Ezra Taylor in the gym, uh, and they're all mapped. Um, and um, there, there is a lot of trees on the site, some of which are in great condition, some of which are less so, so there's a new tree planting regime for ones that have to be removed. Um, but yeah, we, we, we've, we've got that and we'll deal with individual We'll deal with that individually, I think, with, with people who have got, if their trees are affected. Um, the, uh, as I said, the exception of one, I think, is in a poor, really poor condition, um, which needs to be replaced, then uh, the rest will have to stay, the rest can stay. Which is, which lady here yeah, just, focusing, I'm sorry. Yeah. just focusing on the important landscape, um, how closely does your landscape advisor work with your neighbour? Well, we've got the same consultants. Oh. Yeah, I think that's a start. Um, the landscape agency were brought, maybe we were involved in, but when the council bought the site from the university, uh, the Brenton Hall College estate, which was the university, included like the lakes and the wider area. And as you said, there was a program, because the whole site was a heritage at risk including that the park was. So there's a whole programme of tree felling and tree replacement to open up the views, which these guys at Landscape Agency coordinated um, and was done. And so we're in the next stage. So one of the key philosophies um, about the, that we've been working on with YSP, and that's always been consistent, is the roofs across the site and the fact that there is no, there's no fencing and actually how we, we open up the views and create busy places and many <coughs> places and that. So they're, they're the connecting, connecting people. This lady here. Can I just ask about the Camellia House and the Camellia's limits? Are they going to be saved? Or? Yes, the Camellia House um, is, it needs a little bit of work. Rightly or wrongly, we think it needs to be repaired rather than restored, if you get the difference. We don't want it to be, it's got a feel of it, it's slightly rustic kind of qualities, but it does need some repair work, but we don't want to turn it into some kind of pristine, pristine thing. Um, obviously, the camellias are there and they're taking some advice on, on that. It would be for the hotel and that, it's a great opportunity for some photography and showpiece. It's not a particular big building, so you can't have a big event in there, but you could perhaps flow through. So I don't see much change really on Camellia otherwise, <coughs> other than the money that we're spending on um, making, you know, just enhancing it, the quality of it a, bit, a little bit, mainly windows and stuff. Let's go. Let's just in here. Can you explain a little bit more about um, choices from franchising? Sorry. Um, about the process of getting a franchise to take on the hotel. Right. Um, well, we've decided that, as a, from our point of view, as the developer, that we are we are effectively the investor. You know, that we will own. We have a vision. We wanted to create it. We think it will work, and we've got a plan that does. And so we've got a long-term investment in it. So we will have a hotel management company, um, an arrangement. Um, that will operate this as Bretton Hall Hotel. So we don't have, we're not looking for a franchise. No. Okay. Could you point out on the plan what is the part that, if you like, you own exclusively and what is owned then by others? Where is the boundary, if you like, even if you're wanting to merge a free flow? It's a bit like that. It's not. It's a bit like that. It's a, as a boundary. It's, it's defined, but it's 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 broadly the extent of that plan. So it's uh, um, top of Vermont Drive, running through Kennel Block, round through the front of the mansion. 
So you own that rather than YSB? Correct. Okay. Yeah. The long, the freehold of everything here is owned by the council. Yeah. So there's there's the leases. Lease the leases. In that large area, you've already. The leases, yes. The hotel, right? And there's a lease with YSP, and there's a combining agreement. Sorry, there's a yeah, question. The gym. The gym. Um, it doesn't feed. It's not. It's been. Well, it'd be made good. Well, it is made good. We've stripped of the of materials in there, but it's, it doesn't feature in the first phase of work. We've had interest. Some of the ideas around there is whether we can extend the conference in, whether it's education use, whether it's commercial office use, and we've had interest in that. Um, we kind of turned that down because we didn't want kind of tell to wag the dog and find that we regret once the hotel's operating, what that space would, would be. It's a really nice building, and, every, and, and, and we like it quite a lot, and, um, but it, it doesn't have a use at the moment. It has planning permission for offices, and it, it, it could be an education. Um, so we see that, together with the stables, blockers, next phase, the theatre, and the Passmore feature in our current phase because they they provide the space for lecture rooms and conferencing. Would it be possible to keep it as a gym? Um, possibly. Because I mean that would fit in with a lot of hotels the way that they one of the facilities that hotels can offer, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it's quite a big space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there'd be a. A lot of spin cycles in there. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose the floor could take yoga or whatever. Yeah. No, yoga, you can't bounce on yoga, really. Zumba. What about a swimming pool? In the gym? Is it a spa? Yeah. We don't have a leisure swimming pool in the hotel. Um, well, we some work on that, and we don't well, then, you know, whether it's desirable or whether it's necessary is questionable. But, but in the short term, the, 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 there's a possibility of the later phase, but in the short term, there's no. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, yes and no. Um, you know what you feel about country house and the, and the look, and that's why material, you know, I would share, I don't have anything specifically to share yet. Um, I like country homes, country houses are, give you the feel that it is rather exclusive, and that it's rather precious, and I dare touch anything. Um, and that's, the space here, the rooms here, can't kind of speak for themselves. What 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 the real skill is is about the furnishings um, and the feel and, and the look and you know, what we're creating in the space. Depends on certain parts of the building. I mean, the bow room has a particular a particular feel to those regions you room, whereas the annex and the clay might might be slightly more youthful feel. So it's it. But why not go British? In terms of in terms of the um, when you're asking whether you've you must have looked around for different firms, different companies that match your vision and your English country house vision and such like. Yeah. I mean obviously they're all sort of, you know, buy local, help British industry, such like. So why are you going for a Dutch firm? Uh, well perhaps if I may we'll should we should we, we'll share the work. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll take the view. Um, I agree on the local, uh, and we agree on, I mean, that's a lot of philosophy about buying here, and food, and vision, and jobs. We're also about um, expertise of people we've spoken to. So, we'll see. Should we see? We'll see what we think. Can I just add a bit of information on the end of the conversation about uh, trees, and the uh, seating, 
there have been quite a lot of conversations on particularly Facebook about particular things being preserved. Just that we're not being mentioned, but I think it should be mentioned for the people who have not been to these reunions before, that all things like, for example, King's Head and eventually Grasshopper and the main symbols of the hostel blocks have actually been taken off very, very carefully. If you look at the way on, the, we had the photographs online about the way that the, the symbol on the end of the music block was taken off and all the scaffolding, all these things have been preserved and somewhere will be involved in the new buildings. Um, so there's been great amounts of care and all the letters that have been written about can we look after this or there's a seat there or something. They've all been taken very care uh, seriously and all the artefacts from the buildings have been saved. It's even the nameplates, so if Wentworth, the actual nameplate has been very carefully taken off. They will be used somewhere, but all of this is evolving and where exactly those things are used, uh, I think is still, is still evolving, is that correct, Mark? It's yeah, where there, there actually going to there's, use them. There's, there's an artefact strategy, a great expression, it's on the public file, and... Um, that are protected and important, which you which have been involved in, in, in uh, great and that, making sure that they're, they're dealt with properly and stored aside. Together, loads of, you saw, probably down there, you saw the stones, but there's actually another, there's probably 10 times that stored elsewhere. Um, so there, there's a lot of, of, of reuse of materials. Um, but those artifacts go back into landscape. All back into buildings. So you will be able to kind of go around and find fixing. Yeah, there's probably a trail, aren't there? Yeah. Can you find a trail? I mean, I, I live in Darton, and the um, the old council office is not down, and they built the Darton Centre there. But within that is the ends of the plants that have been put up to new buildings. Right. And it's, it's a new model building, but it's like elements of the old ones that have been put into that. So that's really nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to say on a positive note, just um, this is very simplistic, but thank you, because I live very locally. I've been living here since I was a little girl, long before I came to college. And um, it's been really sad to see it deteriorate over the past mm -hmm. years. And I feel when I come now, there's a huge sense of energy about the place. It's opening yeah. up. There's a huge different feeling, and it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to do it. It's really good to hear that. And, and energy is a key word. You know, you came down and, and we came down the other week to, and David was here and we were doing a hospital demolition and that went in front of the hall. It was as though the hall could breathe. It was as though some, you know, it, it was lit in a different way. It really was, the buildings now, but it, it just seemed to have an energy as though it was, it, it was coming back to life again. <laughs> but it feel but it, you know, it, it's, uh, yeah, it's exciting. Um, we got a fair bit to go, um, but you um, know we want to have Can I just add to that positivity? Um, in all the contacts we've had with the Rush Bond, we've always been um, listened to very carefully, and it's been a very sensitive process. Clearly, you have a commercial venture to do. It isn't simply a commercial venture to you, quite clearly. In talking to your staff, they have been affected by the site in the kind of emotional way that a lot of us are affected by the site. Uh, and the fact that it is going to have a new lease of life is the most positive <coughs> thing that any of us could be told or to live through. Um, I've always thought of, of Breton as an onion. You peel off one layer and you find another underneath. And it goes on and on. And I think this is, this is a way that for quite a long period to come, people will be discovering all sorts of levels to this place. Mm -hmm. And it will mean very different things to different people. And I think the way you're balancing the sensitivities of former students and employees, etc., with what you're wanting to put forward in the future, 
has been so far exceedingly positive. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, just before we pack in, um, just a word of warning. If you have, um, if you think you've had trouble with nukes finding ways through little holes and bats flying everywhere, just wait until we get back in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thank you very much, Mark, for coming along and sharing this with us again. Mark.